Hi, welcome to another Street Photography video with me, Nick Turpin. In this video, I'll be talking about the importance of just dropping everything, getting out the front door and hitting the streets. So I've been pretty busy with uh, the launch of the Fujifilm X100V. I've been shooting a little project for Fujifilm and changing the guard back in the palace, which you would have seen in my previous video. Um, now uh, I had to give that camera back uh, and I'm back out with my Fujifilm X100F. Um, and you know, not having the latest equipment is no excuse for not getting out and making pictures. You can get out and make pictures with your iPhone, with your, your smartphone. Uh, that's, that's no reason to, to not get out there. So sometimes, you know, when the sun comes out, you know, we're all busy, we've all got family and work and, and websites and social media and all the rest of it. Sometimes you just have to drop all that stuff, come out and just see what's happening out here. Uh, see what the opportunities are and, uh, and sometimes you'll just, you know, surprise yourself with what you can find. So this weekend there's a storm coming in on Sunday, but today we have a rare day of blue sky and it's February. It's fantastic, a rare day of blue sky, the light is out. Um, I, just, I just had to put everything aside that I had planned for this weekend and pick up my camera and come out and shoot. Uh, there's a demonstration here in Trafalgar Square, which I'm, I'm quite happy to, to look at. Uh, it looks colourful and noisy, so we'll check that out. Street photography is very much about finding the extraordinary in the everyday. Um, so it is a demonstration in the everyday. Certainly in London, it's very much part of everyday life. So, you know, you happen to happen upon these things quite regularly. Um, and I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't uh, take that as a subject matter. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave the house to come down and photograph a demonstration, but if I come across one and I'm out uh, walking the streets, um, then I'll certainly have a look at it. Okay, well I'm out in Trafalgar Square. Uh, there's obviously some demonstration or protest, go protest going on uh, to do with uh, human rights in Iran, I think. Uh, the light's great, uh, nice blue sky, great architecture, uh, lots of colour, lots of people. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull something together here. There's lots of very visual stuff going on that um, you know potentially I could use. Um, I mean, the flags are terrific. I like this yellow ball there. Uh, the yellow ball against the blue sky is very nice. The repetition of flags. Nice busy frame. That spire behind is terrific, isn't it? A couple of flags there framing left and right. Shadow on the white awning. focus on a midpoint here let the flags flap in and out It'd be nice if that yellow ball rotated so we could just see yellow circle really so there's a great scope here for nice foreground nice midground nice background lots of depth in the picture that kiss, kissing guys there So nice stuff going on here. I'll keep that yellow ball in if I can with the spire. So I'm focusing in a midpoint. F16 today, so I've got loads of that's nice with the columns, look at the columns there under the flag. So I'm back button focusing as always, that's nice. Guy's face turning around, look at those two there, talking to them. That hand on the coat jacket is nice, the flag on the left is nice. It's quite loud here, I hope you can hear me. That's nice, isn't it? Look at that. That's nice, the guy's talking here. The hand on the arms, very nice. Got that yellow ball now, with no writing. A the photographer in the background. So I quite like this position because the uh, it's a bit more graphic. 
It crashed down, pops that yellow ball up against the sky. So I could wander about a bit more, but I do like this yellow, this yellow ball here, which I'll lose if I go on a wandering spree. And there's plenty, plenty else to look at. That's nice. And that blue sky is a gift, isn't it, with the flag and the yellow ball? I like this guy's texture jacket here, that's rather good. And there's a ball in between, look. Now they're waving their flags rather nicely. That's nice. So now, you know, I've got my composition, got my yellow ball, got the flag waving, got my angle, got the spire in the background. It's just a matter of shooting a few frames when the flags look like they're in a good place. That's nice, isn't it? The spire going through the ball there. Very noisy, sorry about that. It's a bit of randomness now. It's an unusual character. Still like that textured jacket there, like the guy clapping in the middle with the ball. It's like a repetition of figures. Look at them all clapping. Now I just want to see if I can improve upon it really. Just see if I can get anything better than I've already got. Okay, because I've come back to the yellow circle. Visually, it's my father's strongest element. Including the killing of over 1,500 protesters and the brutal crackdown on their recent popular uprisings. So there's a lot of elements here which I'm trying to wrestle into a nice rectangle. Ask the UN immediately sent as put forward by the NCRI President-elect Mrs. Mario Rajavi. Very nice face there. Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? Guy giving out scars, just a bit different. That's another element. Look how my picture's getting more complicated. Let's pause for a second just to look at this picture because, um, you know, in the uh, in the rush to make pictures on the street, sometimes uh, a lot of the sort of analysis is is missed. Um, so one of the things that I, I like about this is that we've got those two figures close to the camera, left and right. We've got then we've got in the middle the guy with the two flags and the white uh, vinyl there, which gives us a nice uh, middle ground. And then between the two flags, right in the center of the picture, obviously we have that church spire, which looks fabulous against that blue sky. So we've got our, our distance there. So I, I do like pictures that have, you know, depth to them like that, those different layers. Um, now also I get a lot of comments about the fact that I, that I shoot a lot of frames. I take lots and lots of pictures. And, um, you know, some people use the phrase spray and pray. Uh, which I think implies that, you know, there's no control over it, that I'm not planning, that I'm just like, you know, if you shoot enough pictures, you're going to get a good one. Now, I think, I think basically the way that I look at that is that what I'm doing here is allowing for the accident. I'm allowing a little bit of randomness, a little bit of accident into my picture making. It's a, it's a, a deliberate strategy to try and get a few things to happen, which I could not have seen or you know, predicted. And I think this is a good example of that. The way this guy is waving the flag um, and the way that it has curved so beautifully around that yellow ball is something that I could never have seen in camera. It's, I couldn't have seen that and pushed the button. It's all happening far too quickly. You know, we're all familiar with this decisive moment phrase. And of course, you know, we know what that means. Um, but I, you know, sometimes I think there are a lot of decisive moments. There's, there's often, you know, a lot of decisive moments in a second. And it's unrealistic, I think, to, to see that and get it. 
I, I rely more on a feeling that something fabulous is happening. Uh, I get the composition right like I did here and then I allow you know it just feels like there's a there's a great shot a great happening uh, and and you know I trust my my heart almost you know I, I get this sort of uh, sense that I need to be making pictures and I and I push the button and, and hold it down sometimes um, and it can result in in something like this happening this little complete accident which I think is great so um, maybe you know that's me justifying that approach um, modern cameras make it very easy to do this. The X100F I'm shooting with allows me to do 8 frames per second. Um, uh, the new X100V is going to allow me to do 11 frames per second. Um, and it just gives you the chance to you know, choose the right frame a little bit later. So that's why I picked this frame um, out of the series that we've just watched. Lovely repetition of faces. So I'm just trying to capture as many faces as I can in the same frame. So I took about 400 pictures, I think in um, maybe an hour photographing around this uh, demonstration. And um, I was looking for something complex. I was looking to make a complex, busy picture with a lot going on where your eye flits around the picture, can't rest. Um, and this is the frame that I've chosen. Um, it was quite difficult. I had four or five that I liked. But uh, for me, when I saw this, one of the ways that I decoded this scene was to look at the architecture, the space that this was going on. And I loved those. Um, I loved the church in the background with the columns. And I liked the National Gallery to the left with the columns there. Even the fact that there's the repetition of columns, I, I like. Um, obviously, keeping the camera upright to keep those columns vertical was important. Um, now, I also like this guy in the foreground. He gives me that like large foreground element. And he's going from the bottom left. Uh, up his arm through that stick, the flagpole, to the flag in the top right hand corner. So he's going from bottom left to top right, a nice diagonal element. Um, his flag frames that top right hand corner and stops your eye escaping out into the sky um, and allows you to see under the flag at, towards the, the columns in the church in the background. So just the structure of the picture I like. And then within it, obviously, then we have the repetition of the faces um, and all of that colour, all those different facades, the placards, the flags. Um, all the all the you know the people the figures it's just it's just very busy there's a lot going on and um, it's quite an instinctive picture I think I knew I wanted lots of faces um, but they were moving so quickly as you can see in the video that um, you know I had to sometimes just take four or five frames very quickly in quick succession um, just to just to actually have a chance of getting you know four or five of these faces on the placards showing at the same time uh, so that was just a short day uh, out shooting in the city uh, when the weather was good. I uh, got a couple of pictures which I quite like. Um, now, you know, I'm not saying they're amazing street photographs at all. I'm just explaining what I saw, why I took them. Um, now, generally what I do is print out a four by six inch print and pop them on the wall uh, behind me. I have a steel, a sort of steel pin board with magnets um, so I can just move things around. Um, you know, sometimes things will be culled within a day or two other times they'll still be up there in five or ten years time so it's, it's a kind of you know whether those pictures are added to your long-term portfolio it remains to be seen with time so who knows um, anyway I enjoyed being out there I enjoyed taking them I hope you enjoyed watching um, it's probably time for you guys to grab your cameras and, and get out there